did you spot it? The sign in which the giant throws at Puss is the logo of Jack's Corner Factory. His thumb, Pi, and initials J and H. Right at the beginning, the creators foreshadow the main antagonist of the movie. We can also deduce that his influence also spreads onto the city. Right, let's start from the beginning of the film. The first thing that happens is Puss, who recites the Starlight Star Bright Lullaby. Starlight, Star Bright. First star I see tonight. Starlight, star bright. First star I see tonight. Intro specifically, the Puss in Boots headline tells us a secret about the movie. The letter S consists of squiggles. Those represent the wolf's connected sickles, his weapons in the last minutes of Puss. Everywhere else, those characteristic add-ons do not exist. For example, on Puss Wanted Notice. Let's move on to the governor's mansion. Take a look what's on the table. Those two pies aren't here by a mistake. Definitely, they came straight from the Big Jack's Pie Factory. A lot of details like that are scattered all over the new Puss in Boots, so I took it as my task to present you all of them. Pass when he hops on the hands of his fans, there appears to be one which is actually a hook. In the Shrek's universe, there is one character with that trait. It's Captain Hook from Peter Pan. He made his first cameo in Shrek 2. We can see him for the first time as a side character in the Poison Apple Inn, where he sings and plays on the piano. Probably he found himself fond of going to this party. In further scenes in Jack's Hole, room, there is already one hook, apparently it's one of the many that Captain possesses as he's able to swap his artificial limb. Puss in Boots during his speech mistakes the people of Delmar for citizens of Cordoba. What could this mean? Why even this city? As it turns out, Cordoba is a Spanish city located in the south. One of the attractions in this city is the Cat's Courtyard, which is named after the cats because they wandered all over the place in search for food. There are a lot of kitchens around this place, which lured the cats to it. Puss in Boots and his newest design is equipped with a cape. Look at this clip shaped like a cat's head. The first thing that comes to mind is the striking resemblance to Witcher's medallions. Witcher is a Polish famous fantasy novel written by Andrzej Sapkowski. It tells the story of Geralt, a merchant monster slayer. Geralt is a witcher, a genetically modified mutant. All witches belong to various schools, like the school of the griffin, wolf, bear, or a cat. The school of the cat medallion looks analogous to what Post carries on his neck. Moreover, the subtitle for this movie is The Last Wish, which is the same as the title of one of the witcher's novels. During Puss's performance, he plays five-finger fillet between the fingers of some guy. Look at his face. He seriously looks frightened. Remember what Paz is up to in this scene. He taps dance in this particular way. It's going to come in handy later in my video, so just keep it in mind. Governor ruins the moment and says this. The poor dog was called red-handed. During the fight with the governor's boys and later on with the giant, you should listen carefully to the sound effects and the music. Every single clash of the swords is perfectly synchronized with the background soundtrack. Just listen to it on your own. Paz fires up a match with his mouth. In Shrek 2, 3 and 4, Paz never had this tooth. It seems that in the meantime, he placed himself with a new one. It's also quite interesting if it's possible to fire up a match if only using your mouth. It's only an animation, but you know, curiosity knows no bounds. And as it turns out, it's actually doable. The explosions wake up the sleeping golem. It's also based on a legend. It tells the story of a friendly giant which lived near Yampa Valley and served as a protector of the people in the nearest village. The giant was promised to be able to live there peacefully for eternity unless he will harm somebody. Once the village was invaded by an evil ogre, which was quickly pacified by the giant, which also meant he broke the vow. As a consequence, he was put to sleep and now rests in peace. Shrek's universe likes to change some of the popular fairy tales, so this time the giant came to this town to feast on some humans. It kidnaps a girl on cow. Did you spot this small detail, look at the cow's eyes that begin to turn red. The beautifully executed and animated fight with the giant begins. We'll stop here for a second. Do you see him? In the crowd there is our 
evil big wolf himself. He has observed our protagonist since the beginning of the film, but that's not all. He appears in the background in lots of signs, he does it in a way so that's tough to actually spot it. When the cat dies for the last time and is rushed to the doctor's office, on these graphics there is the effigy of wolf, the deaf. He tells Puss later in the movie that he is straight up deaf and literally watched him die every single time. I'm deaf. Straight. Up. It seems he was right. Just look here, on the edges there's our wolf. What's more interesting, this didn't appear in the trailers, a tough deal but damn it, so fantastic. Before we move on, I really want you to convince you to subscribe to this channel, a lot of effort was put into this video as well as every other that was published or is in the works. That would be the greatest appreciation for all of the time spent making this happen. Thanks in advance. The doctor has a few interesting things in his office, he uses the skeleton as a holder for the spade. Here there's information about his research on Hansel and Gretchel and his suspicion they were Siamese twins. Over here there's the effigy of the cat Cerebus. Cerebus in Greek mythology was a free-headed dog guarding the marketplace. Here the creators interpreted him as a cat. There's also reference to Darwin's evolution theory. According to our doctor, firstly there was a snail, later on a stooped cat, the next one is a standing straight cat and a witch, and the last one is is whatever this is. Over it there is a dragon. It would come in handy for a donkey. A scene where Puss plays poker with the dogs is a reference to Cassius' college paintings. The dogs playing poker is a series of paintings, kinda weird. In one of the death scenes, Puss wears characteristic Irish traditional clothes. Irish people wear green during their popular holiday of St. Patrick. Look at the legs of the gingerbread man. Those are glued in with frosting as he lost them because fuck what tortured him in Shrek. The doctor writes something on a card and gives it to Puss. He tells the cat that he he wrote her the address of Mama Luna, however, when we freeze this frame, there's only go here writing on this card. It's a miracle that Paz somehow found the path to her house. In the queue there's the girl with their fish needing a fet's hand. I'm afraid that he wasn't able to help. When Puss walks in front of her, she smiles, as he is some kind of a celebrity. She is cheerful she could see a hero like him in that random place. Genius little detail. Paz wanders to a pub. Where where the most thrilling scene takes place. That's also the first time we see Wolf in our screens. His arrival is foreshadowed by a dying candle on this glass. Why this glass is so special? Before it hadn't even been here on the table. When the camera is on the candle, it somehow appears on the screen. In the final one, the wolf already holds it in his hands. But before he sat down, he had put it on the table. The cat doesn't even notice him. Wolf explains, Everyone thinks you'll be the one to be Defeat me. But no one's escaped me yet. It hints to us that he isn't only a regular bounty hunter, simply nobody managed to escape him and his death himself, which comes inevitably. The next great duel begins, Puss performs his unique spining attack. As it turns out, it didn't work out pretty well, but as his final duel with death, he actually manages to harm the wolf. That means Puss learns from his mistakes. This time, instead of piercing with a spade, he kicked him. On the past spade handle, there are little cat's ears engraved. The animators till the last moment want to keep Wolf's engravings of Puss lights on his sickles a mystery. However, during those two frames in the pub, those are actually visible. The past life flashes by his eyes. One of his flashbacks includes him with Shrek and Donkey. It's pretty much the same as the one from The Lion King, specifically the Hakuna Matata song. Alright, let's explain the genesis of the wolf. He was teased as a big bad wolf. This name rings a bell. It comes from two fairies, Little Red Riding Hood and the Three Little Piggies. We got to know one of the wolves from the Little Red Hood in the Shrek when he appears dressed as a granny. So it all makes sense that our wolf from Puss in Boots is actually from the Three Little Piggies fairy. As it tells, he walked from one house of the piggies to another and was able to wipe them out with his bow. Only the bricked house of the third pig, 
stopped him. An outlook of three little piggies fighting against death sounds really dreadful, but it's so intriguing. Furthermore, the character of the wolf is inspired by the Grim Reaper. This entity is one of the impersonations of death, which was intensely used as a symbol of death and fear of the unknown in the medieval era. Both of them use farming tools, the sky of and a sickle. Potentially, death in Puss in Boots is capable of shape-shifting and chooses wolf's figure due to the contrast between a cat and a wolf. Paz is forced to flee. He arrives at Mama Luna's shelter. Her whereabouts display her passion for cats. Even on the gate, there are the engraved cats. Here we have another animal that is called Red Handed. Goldie appears on screen with her family, consisting of three birds. These are the characters from Gold Deluxe and Three Birds, where the birds took Goldie under their wings. The family of the three birds also appeared in Shrek 1, where they were locked up by Lord Farquaad. What's even worse, the mam ended up as a carpet in his room. Either of them were the same pink hat. Definitely not a coincidence. Look at the Goldie's hairstyle. It's stylized in a way that reassembles the bird's ears. Finally, we get to see Pirito, the cute stray dog which torments others with his over-pessimistic way of being. In this scene, on the wanted letter, there is the insertion on, which gives us the word unwanted. What's more, on the bottom there are empty little notes, which are for people interested to get into contact with someone who put up those notices. On Pirito's belly, there is a visible scar. <laughs> Pretty sad if you you ask me. Puss recalls times of his glory. It's a reference to a final scene in the first installment of Puss in Boots. Our cat spots the silhouette of the wolf. It turns out it's actually Goldie with the bears. How this shadow was even cast? Well, it seems that Goldie's skin was involved in it. Apparently, this catty doesn't really like how the Daddy Bear is performing. Now let's go to Big Jack's headquarters. Jack Honor doesn't really remind you of any fairy, does it? Well, it's not even a fairy tale, only a nursery rhyme, which is as follows. Little Jack Horner sat in the corner, eating a Christmas pie he put in his thumb and pulled up the plum, and said, what a good boy am I. In Horner's room, there are plenty of magical items from myths, legends, and fairy tales. Here is Excalibur, a sword from the Arthurian cycle, those unique grenades made out of apples, a reference to Snow White's poison apple, and also Green Goblin's bombs from Spider-Man. On the stained glass, there is Jack with Poseidon's, or Neptune's trident. Could not miss Cinderella's slipper. This cat represents an ancient Egypt's goddess of love from the pantheon, Bastet, the flower from the Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin's flying carpet, Gulliver's travel ship, and the hand of Midas, a king's hand who wished his hand had turned everything into gold. In the background, there is a map of the star made by Jack, which lets us assume he tried to find it on his own. Here we can read Santa Maria, which is Christopher Columbus' ship. Those sisters are possibly a reference to the Sun Snake's sisters from Game of Thrones. There is Mary Poppins' umbrella, which she uses as her way of commuting. The bag with no bottom also belongs to Mary Poppins. Jack is after the cats and magically turns the pumpkin into a big machine. Obviously, it's a reference to Cinderella, however, this vehicle is pretty familiar with Mad Max, specifically vehicles that were used by warlords on the sand. Another piece of evidence for the reference to Mad Max is that the next scene begins with a shot of a desert. What's more, the machine is not dragged by horses, but by unicorns with other horns. Puss meets Kitty the softpaws and shortly after they begin to run away. Suddenly, the wolf appears and has two coins put on his eyes. It's yet another hint that he is the death. This gesture is a reference to Charon, a god of dying men in Greek mythology. Charon transported the dead people's souls to Tartarus. He was paid one obol for his service, so the ordinance required people to put a coin on the dead men's eyes as a way of payment. Our characters arrive at the dark forest. The entrance looks like some kind of a monster's jaws. Here we have the eyes and right there, teeth. Moreover, Puss shows Perito first inside. It's yet another reference, this time to Smurfs, where there was a scene in which Gargamel throws Azrael into a portal. Are you dead? What? Dog? Alive? Even Azrael and Puss's full color is the same. They enter the place and as they make their first steps, the first obstacle on their way is those big flowers. The only thing they demand is a little sniff and they let you through. When Prudo encourages the cats to do so, they have quite a curious exchange of glances. In this scene, a heart wrenching detail is about to happen. As Jack Horner pulls out the Excalibur and it clears his path from Goldie and her family, look at the mammy bear. The first thing she does is grab the girl and absorbs the fall. She's aware that she can't withstand as much damage as birds. 
During Big Jack's and Flower's fight, he pulls out a cricket out of his bag, which is the equivalent of somebody's conscience. It's the same cricket that appears in Pinocchio. We also can spot another cat's head on Kitty's handle. As it seems, not only Pooh is fond of small decorations like that. Jack catches Perito. Using this moment, I would like to point out the way animation was done. Characters which attack or are in the fight are animated in fewer frames than others. It's mostly visible in this sequence. The birds behind Kitty have two times fewer frames of animation than others. Kitty's move is executed on 6 frames while the bears are only 3. When Kitty pulls out her spade, automatically she receives fewer frames. Overall, it creates an amazing and original effect. This baker wields a hobnailed roller, which is a variation of a popular baseball weapon in pop culture. Out of nowhere, Death makes its appearance. Moose flees once again and as the dog spots it, he runs after him. If we freeze the movie here, there's another hint that tells us he isn't some common bounty hunter. There isn't his icon on the map. Kitty Evis drops on the conversation and then walks up to them like she hadn't even thought of doing it before. Let's slow down a bit and look here. When Puss hears her coming, he immediately wipes his eyes with his paws. The creators didn't show us it directly, but our Puss has shed some tears. Goldie and her team encounter an illusion of their home. She finds her favorite book with fairy tales. On the left side of the cover, there is a library card. There is Goldie, of course, Hansel and Gretchel from yet another fairy tale, but also a well encrypted name. There's the visible letter H and the unfinished word Mpti. It links to Humpty. If you remember well, Humpty is one of Pooh's friends who in the end betrayed him, which all happened in the 2011 movie. Big Jack is irritated with the cricket, which finally leads him to throw him down the cliff with a finger snap. If we slow down this sequence a bit, we are able to see how his leg and one of the wings are being torn. Pretty brutal. At the end of the movie, this cricket is forced to fly on the phoenix as he he lost one of his wings. The cats sneak into the bear's house to steal the map. Notice how Kitty enters through a burning fireplace. Bears of course are aware of the situation and the fight breaks out. And now, do you remember how I told you about the Pooh's tap dance? With the same choreography, Kitty and Pooh break the laws of physics. Perito once again is kidnapped and Puss is trapped in the crystal cave, where he meets his past lives. In this scene, Wolf confesses that he indeed is deaf. Kitty, rescuing our doggo, leaves a letter with the text You have been crimed, which is a follow up to Goldie's earlier words and also the gang name she and the bus called themselves Crime Family. A big time crime syndicate. Not a big time crime syndicate, love. A big time crime family. All of the characters arrive at the star at the same time. This scene is characteristic of Western movies. Puss in Boots refers here to another movie, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, in which there is a twin sequence like the one in Puss. Everyone struggles to get the map. Puss and Goldie have a face to face. It shows a plain contrast between the scene with a girl from the beginning of the movie and this one. He steps on Goldie's face as he did it to this random girl. Although Goldie doesn't show the same joy as the other one did. Wolf joins the fight and mocks the battleground with flames. As soon as this happens, Kitty rushes to help pass. Another great way of building the characters by the creators. Puss in Boots realizes that he has to fight for his last life to make it valuable. Our cat is a man of honor, and when Wolf loses one of his sickles, he lets him pick it up with the same line the dev did so in the inn. Pick it up. Pick it up. Jack Horner is dragged down with the collapse of the star, holding a thumb down. It's a reference to Terminator, however, in that movie, the thumb is up. There's also the post credit scene. Team Friendship steals the ship from the governor and sails to far, far away. On the ship's bow, there is the governor's portrait with a seal? Yeah, I think it's a seal. The background soundtrack is well known from the adventures of our green ogre. Where are we headed, anyways? Off to find new adventures and to see some old friends. Well, subscribe for next breakdowns of popular movies on this channel.